everybody i am scotty j and we've got an absolutely just mind-blowing show for you today our next guest it's funny when you think about rock titan this this gentleman is is really one of the reasons why i created rock titan because if there's a rock god in the universe it's definitely him uh, not only is he an amazing musician, one of the greatest guitarists on the face of the planet Earth, he's also an author, but maybe more important than all of that, he is a true champion for your freedom as an American. I can't even think of anyone off the top of my head who works harder to make sure that your freedoms as an American stay intact. Ladies and gentlemen, I am joined by the one and only Motor City Madman himself, Mr. Ted Nugent. Ted, how are you? Greetings there, Scotty J. You deserve me because you're obviously speaking truth, logic, and common sense. But I got to tell you, if you really want to celebrate the rock titan within, I hope you recorded all that dialogue we just finished because that was the best interview ever. Wow. Considering you were with Joe Rogan like a week ago, that's pretty high praise. Um, my head might explode on camera right now. So thank you for that. But, well, be, uh, sure, be sure that you share what you you and I talked about oh, absolutely. before the interview. That, that was the podcast. I recorded the whole thing. I recorded the whole thing, and the audience will definitely see that 100%. So, I mean, with all that being said, how has the hunting season been so far? I know you were saying early in the beginning that uh, this has been one for the ages, yeah? Backstraps you for know, everybody. I, I cherish my earthly life. Well, I, I, think, I think the best elements of the American dream is primal. It's about autonomy, about rugged individualism, about self-sufficiency, all the important things for spiritual invigoration. Scotty, I'm telling you, this is the best hunting season of my life. I'm having so much fun. I'm surrounded by backstraps and gut piles. My dogs are worn out. The pheasants, the ducks, the doves, the rabbits, the squirrels. It's just a wonderful, wonderful hunting season. And that's why the new record is going to be so powerful because it was recorded in the swamps of Michigan. Okay, that's very cool. Detroit Muscle, everybody. That's coming out April 2022. So, uh... Everyone, be on the lookout for that. And actually, go out to tednugent.com or you can go out to pavementmusic.com and you can pre-order Detroit Muscle right now. And of course, everyone's had the chance to digest the single, come and take it. And uh, like you were saying earlier also, that is a very powerful message. And I mean, if, if that message ever needed to resonate within the minds of everyone, it would definitely be the times we're in right now. Would you agree? Well, I'm a natural guy. I pay attention. I'm actually so radical that I participate in the sacred experiment self-government. People go, hey, Nugent, I like your political views. The Constitution isn't a view. The Bill of Rights isn't a view. There's no opinions involved. It's self-evident truth. It's historical evidence that God made us to be individual, independent, self-sufficient, in charge of our own lives. No one other than me is in charge of my life. Any laws and any regulations that exist, the good ones came from we the people. The bad ones, the constitutional violating regulations, no hunting on Sunday in Pennsylvania, those are toxic, those are anti-American, and I fight against them all the time. So even though if the Come and Take It song had no message, let's say it was just about short skirts and vitality, <laughs> uh, which by the bottom line, it probably that's really what it is about. But the music, what Greg Smith on bass and Jason Hartless on drums put into every one of my songs, every time, every gig, every jam, is what every guitar player and every songwriter dreams of. So a huge salute to the virtuosity and the work ethic and just the, the piss and vinegar energy and attitude of Greg Smith from Pennsylvania right and on. Jason Hartless from Detroit. So the whole album is just a firestorm of high energy, fun music, jazzy, bluesy, rhythm and blues, rock and roll, intense stuff. And we are so proud of it. When you hear, obviously, Come and Take It is a crank out. It's a throttle storm of not just, you know, middle fingers to authority violating punks in the White House and right. somebody that wants to infringe against their constitutional oath, against the freedoms that 
God gave Americans individually. <laughs> do I really have to say this? But obviously I do have to say it. So come and take it as a musical piece is just a force of, to reckon with. But wait till you hear, Scotty, the song American Campfire. Wait till you hear the instrumental Winter, Spring, Summer, Fall. Wait till you hear the song Feedback, Grindfire. What Greg and Jason put into my songs is just the dream of every musician out there. So I'm so proud of this record. And I think the next single after Come and Take It, within the next month or so, I hope, will be the song American Campfire. And oh. it will light you up. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I can't wait to share that with my dad like you talked about. I'm sure that that will uh, have a strong sentimental value for the both of us for sure. But uh, it's funny because you, know, you mentioned your bass player and uh, Jason Hartless. I know that Jason's been chomping at the bit to get that new drum kit out there. I've seen it. It's beautiful. I, I just think it's great that they've had the opportunity to kind of put their stamp, you know, on your music, you know, that they're making with you now, because I know the last one, uh, the music made me do it. I think that that was Jason's first album with you, was it not? Like the, where That's he did right, all yeah. the work? But, but... That's right. What Greg and Jason represent is the gift that God has given me since 1957. I keep in touch with my old musicians. Some of them are still alive and I keep in touch, but I have had such gifted, hardworking, talented, music craving, music throttling, music adventurous guys all my life. And what Greg and Jason represent, again, I just can't rave enough about not only their talents, but the work ethic and how they apply their talents and how they immerse themselves into my songs because my songs are sacred statements from my heart and right from my balls and from my spirit. <laughs> and what Jason and Greg do, they own the songs. They, it's their statement. What they put, the groove and the rhythm tracks that they create are what every guitar player dreams of. So People should remember the names Greg Smith and Jason Hartless. These guys will be around forever, and they're monsters. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Now, speaking of guys that are monsters and been around forever and, and folks that you've played with, it's funny because um, I've had Carmine Apiece on the show a number of times, and I know you guys are friendly, and obviously you guys have played together in the past. And some time back, this is going back a few years, uh, Carmine put out a book. Um, sex, drums, and rock and roll. And he had a story about you in there. Are you familiar with it at all? I'm not familiar with the story, but I guarantee he pays attention and all my stories are wonderful stories, but I can't imagine which one he, he, he focused on. Well, so it was, it was one of your kills, all right? So I guess um, you had someone preparing a meal for him. He was staying at your place. And he was detailing this burger. He, it was like a, a hamburger, but it wasn't like from, you know, cattle or anything. It was like m maybe a bison burger or something. The way he just described it, it was like really, really dark. And he's like, you don't expect me to eat this. You know, it was just so funny because, you know, obviously everyone knows you as a very avid hunter. And, uh, you know, I guess at that point, you know, Carmine hadn't had any familiarity with eating anything literally so organic, you know, like, you know, probably something that you harvested yourself. Do you do your own butchering for your kills? Or do you I have someone do, do it? I do my own kill. I'm the only guy that breeds my wife and plays my guitar solos. Yeah, I'm this independent guy. I'm radical. I actually do all my own stuff. Yeah, what, what Carmine did, here's a guy from Long Island <laughs> who thinks that if it says USDA on the meat, that it's okay, but if it's a free-range wild animal, that it's suspicious. When just the opposite has to be true. If you want to get sick on food, it will have to have a USDA stamp on it. If you want to have the healthiest, most nutritious natural food in the world, Ted Nugent will kill it for you because hunting, fishing, and trapping is perfect. Mass farming by the gazillions of slaughtered creatures in pens, that's not perfect, even though I got to tell you, I salute the farmers and ranchers of America because do Americans and people around the world demand 10 billion chickens a day. And I can't kill that many pheasants. So if you want to have animals that are raised in the most 
irresponsible, disgusting fashion, then be sure you get something that says USDA on it. Meanwhile, I'll eat pure stuff. And Carmine has come to grips with the fact yeah. that even though the animals' heads were on the wall in some cases, that the food that I prepare is the most nutritious, natural, healthy, and delicious food on planet Earth. And so I had to wake up the Long Island boy. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, you do speak truth. One thing I thought was really interesting that was funny, um, just because I actually saw the podcast you were on a few years ago with Joe Rogan, where you had this really just profound you know, statement when you're talking about, and I guess you were mentioning how your one son's a vegan. And, um, you know, it just came down to what's better, what's worse, you know, now I'm, I'm paraphrasing big time. What I'm getting at is that I saw just this recently, it looked like Kevin Costner in Yellowstone stole your lines from that interview because I watch Yellowstone. I'm like an avid watcher. My wife and I are way into it. And it was so funny because in the last episode or two episodes ago, I'm listening to, you know, Kevin Costner talk to this, you know, animal rights, you know, Greenpeace, you know, activist, and everything that he said, I'm like, wait a minute, whoa, 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 hit the brakes here. Those are Uncle Ted's lines. I heard him talking. That, that, those were, that was like his script from three years ago. I thought that was hilarious. Yeah, Taylor Sheridan is a big fan of mine. He follows me. And that statement I made on Joe Rogan absolutely twisted skulls around the world because if you want to kill the most living things, if you want to cause as much death as possible, then by all means grow some more beans because behind that tractor is a plow and a disc and it is dismembering and slaughtering and killing everything so you can have a tofu salad and anything that might slither back in that field of beans for your tofu salad they'll come in with a Monsanto chemical warfare and kill everything so you can have a vegan meal and Kevin Costner the script that they wrote for him was almost word for word of that moment in time that I articulated how you get a vegan diet. Yep. You get a vegan diet by killing everything that dares to be around that field that you want to grow your beans in. And I got to tell you, guys like Jesse James and, and Joe Rogan's family, a lot of people, they responded to that interview and they went, you know, I never thought of it that way. And isn't it convenient not to have to think so you can live a lie and you can pretend that if you eat tofu that they're not going to kill as many cows this year, which is an absolute joke. If you want to have a vegan diet, have a vegan diet. That's your choice. But all the vegans in the world haven't caused a reduction of one cow, one pig, one goat, one lamb, you got to be kidding me. Right. And if you want to have a glass of wine at the animal rights fundraiser, that vineyard operator kills everything that tries to get into that vineyard. How stupid do you have to be not to know this stuff? So I'm trying to help fix stupid. It's, it's God's word. God sent me down here to try to fix stupid, and I'm doing a great job of it. I believe it. Well, you do speak truth. So one of the other things I'm curious about, just because, I mean, obviously you are so well-educated, you're so devoted to this. I mean, you live it. You don't just talk it, you live it. You walk it, you know? Um, in terms of any, like, maybe high-profile musicians or any celebrities or anyone of note that the pu general public would immediately be able to identify, um, has anyone ever come to you with a certain perspective that was very negative, you know, toward hunting in general, where you were able to just completely, you know, educate them and convert them and maybe take them from, you know, never having hunted a day of their life, maybe even being completely opposed to it. And now they're actually passionate about doing so. And now they're actually one of the community. Scotty J, I'm a very unique rock titan. The answer <laughs> to that is yes, yeah. I've done it thousands of times since really? the 1960s when the hippies morphed out of the beatnik area were comfortably <laughs> numb was somehow a desirable condition. By the mm. way, comfortably numb is actually uncomfortably dumb. But the more you smoke dope, the dumber you get. And, and the 
more of a lie and denial you can live with all due respect. So yes, many people have come up in a gentlemanly way, in a friendly way, in, in an inquisitive way. And once I spell out the functions of real nature, which I live, I'm a farmer, I'm a rancher, yeah. I plant trees by the tens of thousands, I I maximize the clean air, soil, and water habitat on my Michigan and, and Texas properties by being an honest, boots-on-the-ground, hands-on conservationist resource steward. And my environmental impact is 100% positive. Yeah. I produce more healthy, clean air, soil, and water than maybe anybody because I, I own a lot of ground and I manage that ground for health, for balance, by harvesting the surplus deer and the, the varmints and the pigs and the turkeys. I mean, a botanist come to my Michigan fen. A fen is a unique wetland somewhere between a marsh and a swamp that, that actually is the only grounds that will support the Mitchell satyr butterfly and the Christmas tree fern. Botanists and scientists and biologists come to my ground and examine my extensive fen and articulate astonishingly that I have the healthiest wetlands they have ever seen because I kill a lot of deer. And because I harvest the surplus and the habitat is prime, it's in prime condition. So yes, people have come up to me and figured if they don't hunt that somehow they're saving a deer when just the opposite is true. Because everybody has an Aunt Edna that had Bambi come flying through the windshield of their Buick uh -huh. all across this country because they think they can save deer. Meanwhile, um, the education impact that I have in my interviews and our Ted Nugent Spirit of the Wild TV show, 33 years running. We were on public television before the Outdoor Channel. And you should see the unsolicited testimonials I get, not just from across America, but all across the world where they watch my show. And after I explain the carrying capacity of a finite habitat and the population dynamics of various wildlife species, they come to realize that it is grossly irresponsible to not harvest the surplus, whether it's a pond or a stream, if you don't harvest the surplus fish, they're going to continually get stunted, disease will probably occur, and they'll end up eating themselves out of house and home, and the whole ecosystem is destroyed. But here's the horror, Scotty. What I just said is nature. It's not my opinion. I have no opinions. I merely participate based on the nature reality. Right. Nothing I just said has ever been mentioned in a school in America, which is why we're turning out complete idiots that yeah. somehow think animals have rights as they, as they destroy habitat, do nothing to enhance or improve it or manage it. So yes, the Spirit of the Wild TV show has had a huge educational impact and that the producers of, of Yellowstone, this hugely popular series, yeah. actually implemented the truth, logic, and common sense and the education from the author of Wango Tango because it's profound, it's true, it's honest, and it's science. So I'm very proud of that. Yeah, no, as you should be. But yeah, no, that's, I mean, I just figured, you know, I, I wonder how many people out there, you know, that were just so opposed to it for propaganda, from propaganda, really, more than anything else. And then you come at it, you know, from just, like you said, a very factual, truthful perspective. And, uh, you know, now they might be looking at things a different way. Um, you know, and that being said, just looking at how our culture has changed so much, you know, um, it's funny, I was thinking back in like the 80s, how with music, there was like this explosion of explicit lyrics and, you know, everything like that. You had, you know, hip hop really starting to explode, you know, and, and the vulgarity and music started to become maybe a little bit more prominent and prevalent and things of that nature. But you didn't necessarily have this level of cancel culture even then that you do now. And it's almost like now, as far as the actual language that's used in terms of vulgarity, profanity, things of that nature, no one even thinks twice about it. However, the actual messages that might be in the music, that is starting to find its way into this new cancel culture. You know, if you say something that doesn't go along with a certain narrative that's being pushed out there now, it's like, you know, they may not actively cancel you, but you're not getting promoted in a way as a musician where people are going to hear your music, you know, and a lot, for a lot of these young, um, 
you know, inspirational, you know, musicians that are just trying to start to make their way now, you know, they're not Ted Nugent, you know, who's been jamming for 60 years, you know, where they've already got a, an audience that they've established. What do you think of what's going on in that arena? Do you have any thoughts there? You think I might have a few thoughts on that? Yeah, let's take it right to here and now in 2021. Who could possibly be so feeble, so stupid, so touchy, so racist, so nasty as to think that the Stones can't play the song Brown Sugar? Isn't that something? Here's a song celebrating black girls. Who doesn't love a beautiful black girl? How can you not understand that that's celebrating that. How about, can can ACDC not sing Dirty Deeds, Done Dirt Cheap? Here's right. a little inside information for the feeble, touchy, spineless, little soulless wimps out there. It's a song. Nobody in ACDC has ever used dynamite or TNT for anything. Right. It's a song. The song Street Fight Man, Mick Jagger is anything but a street fighting man yet dirt balls how how about this here's a little alert for all you feeble numb nuts out there eric clapton didn't shoot the sheriff <laughs> right. are you are you kidding me right so here's a big here's a big gesture for the touchy feely good wimps out there eat me right isn't it amazing how hypersensitive everyone's gotten over the years? I mean, it's it's got to drive you nuts. Like that, I don't they exist. You could take a hammer around to the schools of America, and ninety percent of these dirt bags wouldn't know which end to grab. They're absolutely celebrating dependency. They like to be catered to. They don't want to get roughed up. They don't want to have to be put. They don't want. They don't know what a chore is. <laughs> now only the guilty need to feel guilty, because in my world, I know all these farmers and ranchers and hunters and fishermen and trappers and real down-to-earth people, rugged individuals that declare their independence. And their kids are shooters. Their kids are hunters. Are safe hunters. Those kids aim small, miss small. And unlike Alec Baldwin, they know that there's only one gun law you need on planet Earth. And that is never point a weapon at anything you're not willing to destroy. Right. Hey, Alec Baldwin, you prick. You soulless, nasty, rotten prick. You were pointing the gun at a human being. You killed her. You're guilty. I don't want to hear about the hammer. I don't want to hear about the trigger. You were pointing it at a human being. You're guilty. You should be in a cage for the rest of your rotten punk ass life. Yeah. It, you know what? Gun education is something that always is, you know, perplexed me as to why there's not more of it. You know, everyone's so quick to condemn it, but do they know anything about it in the first place? You know, because like we're talking about hunting, you know, when my boys are 13, you know, they're going through hunter safety training in Pennsylvania. I don't know what it's like in all the other states across the nation but in pennsylvania you are not allowed to go hunting until you have taken a hunter's safety training course and too many people are going out there i mean you know and and they don't get educated they don't know what they're doing they're out there they're ignorant and they're just you know think they're being cool whatever and people can get hurt that way you know very seriously you know and i, and I think that well, if, if i may if i may scotty yeah the Pennsylvania Game Commission are horrible people. Huh? All across this country, do you think a bureaucrat knows when your son and daughter is ready to go hunting? Or do you think mom and dad know when your son or daughter is ready to go hunting? How about the Pennsylvania Game Commission? If you think that you can control Sundays during God's natural hunting season and tell the free citizens of Pennsylvania, the home of the Liberty Bell, that you can't hunt on your own farm on Sunday, then you're bad, bad people. You are rotten, power-abusing people. And the the people of Pennsylvania, I got a call from a buddy going, hey, the game commission gave us a couple of Sundays. They don't have any Sundays to give you. God gave you Saturday and Sunday to hunt. They gave you Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. What kind of punk-ass, tyrannical, power-abusing prick 
could possibly tell an American citizen how they send, spend their Sundays. Shame on you, Game Commission. Shame on you. You are tyrants and you need to be replaced with people who adhere to science and freedom. Nobody can tell that kid he can't hunt till he's 13. We got five and six year old kids in pe Texas every year that go hunting and they kill that hog cleanly. They kill that deer cleanly. They, they kill that duck cleanly. Bureaucrats are punks. They're abusing power, and Pennsylvania is the worst example of it. Yeah, well, I, I'm not going to disagree with you, because I, I I do. I completely agree with everything That's you said. That's a good idea. Yeah, no, I mean, I completely agree with you. All I'm saying is that if there were proper education, because I think so many people are just But ignorant. there is proper education. There's hunter safety's been implemented since the 1950s. Right, the, right. You, there's no hunting accidents. There's hunting negligence. More people fall out of trees sure. than get shot because right. what kind of numb nuts are going to climb up a tree without a safety harness? So every every so-called accident is actually negligence. I mean, Pennsylvania, you're not lose, allowed to use semi-automatic rifles. Right. That's the right. only state in the nation with that law. That's wow. an insane wow. law. I That's a that. dumb law. That's an yeah. anti-American law. Why don't you just have the bureaucrats of the Game Commission go down to the Liberty Bell and piss on it? <laughs> I can't yeah. believe these guys. Yeah, no, no, you're, you're not wrong. But no, you, you bring up a, a great point, though, because, I mean... If any hunters were out there in the woods, you know, shooting themselves in hunting season, it'd be all over the news. I mean, you would hear about it nonstop. I mean, all the media needs is a reason to, you know, attack hey, our, Scotty, our Second Amendment. Scotty, Scotty, more blacks will shoot each other in Chicago today than all the so-called hunting accidents in any given year. Oh, yeah. You but never hear about it. they'll somehow focus on the, the legal gun owners, but they won't even prosecute people who are shooting each other on film in Chicago. Right. It absolutely is engineered violence. The government, the DOJ, the FBI, the court system, the, these, these liberal prosecutors, they are orchestrating repetition crime. They are, they are engineering recidivism by not prosecuting people, burning down buildings on film, and then the Democrats will bail out the arsonists who burnt down an entire neighborhood in Seattle on film. This is planet of the cuckoo's nest. It is. So I'd hope, number one, here's the most important thing. We could go on for a hundred days with examples of abuse of power and treason by Joe Biden and the entire gang in the government. But here's the answer. Please, Scotty J and your dad and all the conservation families of America, Go to HunterNation.org. Please, HunterNation.org. We're putting boots on the ground in all 50 states. Remember in 2016 when I did those rallies in Pennsylvania, we got the licensed hunters to vote in 2016 in right Michigan, on. Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania. Yep. That's how we got a great president in the White House. Yep. HunterNation.org is dedicated to make sure that anybody running for office in America has to adhere to God, family, country, constitution, bill of rights, the declaration of independence, work ethic, law and order, and support the hunting tradition lifestyle. HunterNation.org. If you don't become a partner with us, Nancy Pelosi considers you an ally, which makes you a pretty bad person. Mm. So apathy has been at the core of every problem in America. And it's, it's not just about hunting, it's about the Constitution and individual freedoms and enforcing the damn law. HunterNation.org okay. is the answer right to get America back on track. I promise you. All right, all right. Well, we're definitely going to be sharing that link here. And, uh, oh, man, that's a lot to absorb, Uncle Ted. I'll tell you what, you lay it down. You really do. You lay it down like no other. But uh, so I mean, with Detroit Muscle coming out in April 2022, can we look forward to a lot of these feelings, a lot of these emotions, a lot of these beliefs that you you have so much conviction for? Do these find their way into your music, you know, that's going to be on Detroit Muscle? Well, once in a while, Detroit Muscle is just celebrating 
my uh, fire breathing Mopar with 840 horsepower and my Ford Bronco that has 850 horsepower. So we love Detroit muscle in the horsepower world, but also there's equal Detroit muscle in the musical world. With Ted Nugent, the Amboy Dukes, the MC5, Bob Seeger, Grand Funk Railroad, Brownsville Station, the mighty Motown Funk Brothers, Little Stevie Wonder, The Four Tops, The Temptations, today Kid Rock. There is a musical horsepower in Detroit that is more powerful than any place, anywhere, ever, and I celebrate that. But there's a song called American Campfire that celebrates the great outdoor lifestyle and having an open communication with family and friends. There's an instrumental titled Winter, Spring, Summer, Fall that is just a beautiful soundtrack to the soul-cleansing, healing powers of nature that we live in the great outdoors there's a song scotty <laughs> remember this song title feedback grind fire there's a song on detroit muscle titled feedback grind fire okay. that will make your car go really really fast it's so high energy what greg and, and jason did to these songs there's a song called born in the motor city there's a song that after my brother john died which he was a great man and there was a lot of heartbreak that still exists that I'm an honest deliverer of my my feelings, my emotions, my spirit, my middle finger. Yeah. And when my brother John died, a song called Leave the Lights On happened, much like the Fred Bear song. Okay. So the record, so proud of what the record represents. So there's a lot of piss and vinegar, a lot of fire, a lot of passion, a lot of defiance, a lot of fun. And the song Come and Take It, I think that's probably the only real um, political middle finger on fire on the record okay. but the song is high energy we love the music and i think you'll love the music now how looking forward are you to uh getting back out on the tour trail again because obviously the last couple summers that we've had there wasn't really a whole lot of opportunity to tour things have really been locked down as far as uh hitting the road with your guys you looking forward to it yeah you know can you uh envision a a, a teenage boy in a room getting ready to prepare the Victoria's Secret uh, models with a paint-on bikini? <laughs> Does the word horny ring a bell? <laughs> Jason and Craig and I are dangerously horny to play my killer songs. We can't wait to play Stranglehold and Wang Dang Sweet Poon Tang and Great White Buffalo and Cat Scratch Fever and Free For All and Snakeskin Cowboys and Paralyzed. The music made me do it. We can't wait to play uh, Feedback Grindfire and American Campfire and Come and Take It. I have so many killer songs and what greg and jason do to every song every night every concert every gig is an absolute flame-throwing a10 warthog orgy of sonic bombast and grooves and throttleness man so yes we can't wait to get on the road oh man i tell you what you better be making your way out to pa that's for sure or actually anywhere in the greater tri-state area for that matter pennsylvania delaware maryland jersey new york virginia it's all a game. It's all fair game. I can make it out to any one of those areas. But no, that's awesome. Every, that's awesome. every gig every gig is the most important gig. Every song is the most important song. And, I, and I, if I may, right here on Rock Titan, America, music lovers, music lovers around the world, I love you. I love you madly because you love the music. I love the music. I'm a bigger fan for the music than all of you put together. But that you so love my music. I love you so much for loving my music that you have no idea how much we appreciate. I've been doing this for over 60 years, and I've never been more excited about songs and music than I am right now. And so in 2022, I got the best guitar tone in the history of the world. Yes, you I do. What Greg and Jason do, the sound of our music, the pulse, the energy, the fire of our music is out of control. And we can't wait to share it with real music lovers across this great nation. Yeah, I can't wait to hear your Gibson Birdland once again. That that That's for sure. You got the, you know, parting thoughts, because I know you got to get going, but uh, yes. <laughs>
Absolutely no one produces a tone like you. That is for sure, man. That's awesome. That is awesome. Well, parting thoughts, Uncle Ted. Parting thoughts. Uh, Christmas. You got any plans for Christmas? Anything special? Yeah, I got the family coming. I got a bunch of hunters that join me for my birthday hunt. I book a birthday hunt here at our ranch in Texas every year. We got a New Year's hunt. I got my sons and daughters coming, the grandkids. We're going to have, and we hunt every day during the hot, well, I hunt every day from September to March. In nice. fact, I hunt in March. Wait, I hunt all year. Yes. <laughs> I even hunt when I'm on the road. I always go home at night and I at least trap a raccoon or something. Right. So my point is, is the family gets together for every ex- celebration. They're coming from my birthday party. I'm going to be 73 years old. I'm having the time of my life. And then during the holidays, we eat venison, a big old haunch of venison, a wild turkey. We got some doves, got some pheasant, some mallards in the freezer. So yeah, it's a big celebration in the Nugent house. And I hope everyone has the safest, most wonderful celebratory Christmas season of their lives. And I got to tell you, if people want to get the ultimate Christmas gift at mytednugent.com, we got the two most important battle cries in the world. Come and take it and I will not comply. If you want these killer, I signed another thousand of these. I personally autograph every one. You go to tednugent.com and we're having a stupid sale right now. But I got to tell you, Scotty J, my fellow rock titan celebratory man backstrapper, Yes. God bless you and your family. Thanks for Thank allowing you. me to express myself because, because when I express myself, I have a funny feeling I express you and people who live truth, logic, common sense, well, goodwill, decency, work ethic, being the best that they can be. That spirit, in spite of the government, media, big tech, academia, and the weirdos in Hollywood, that spirit of America is alive and well. It exists right here on the Rock Titan. It exists in your family, in your dear camp. And everybody, never, ever give up. Be sure you go to HunterNation.org. I'm not kidding. HunterNation.org. If you're not a force for the positive traditional values of America, then the enemies of America consider you on their team. You've got to be registered to vote. You've got to vote. You've got to educate your family and friends at deer camp, at the shooting range, at the barbecue, at the bowling alley, at church, at school. You've got to get more involved because these punk-ass bureaucrats are walking all over us and it's time to stand up and not let them do it anymore the most important fire of america is defiance when they tell you to do something you know is wrong you don't have to do it you need to defy these tyrants and these punks look what happened to the fbi the fbi is not a law enforcement agency anymore they're a bunch of jackboot punks and if there's some good fbi agents you don't have to feel guilty but you got to You got to take control of the FBI because right now it's being led by a bunch of idiots, a bunch of oath violating anti-American punks. And we don't have to stand for this. The Pennsylvania Game Commission, get their head out of their ass and get back to science and safety. If a, if a hunting law doesn't have to do with science and safety, get it the hell off the books. Amen. This is what I'm doing nationwide. HunterNation.org. If you give a damn about the freedom and the autonomy of your American dream. HunterNation.org. So HunterNation.org, everybody. And TedNugent.com for the new Detroit Muscle pre-order. PavementMusic.com as well. And... Uh, Uncle Ted, you literally, you are the man. You are the man, and it is my honor to have been able to host you today. And uh, I look forward to hearing this new album, and we have got to catch up again. And I'm telling you right now, I definitely got to make it out to your ranch. Whether it's your your land out there in Michigan, your land out there in Texas, my dad and I, I think we owe you a visit. We got to come hunting with you, because that would be be the experience of a lifetime, I think. That'd be a lot of fun. I guarantee it. But, Scotty, God bless you, man. Aim small, miss small. My very best to your dad. Sorry you missed opening day, but I hope you get some backstraps out of the deal. But to all the hunters and all my friends out there, just have a wonderful, safe season. And here's another important message. There's a horrible curse in America that we can all fix right now. If you know somebody that drinks and drives, fix them. Don't let anybody in your life drink and drive. Innocent lives are being slaughtered 
just because some dirt ball thinks he can drink and drive. Let's all be warriors against that. Reach out when you see somebody drinking and they think they can drive. Don't let them. We could save lives just with a little simple thing like that. Amen. Amen to that. All right, everybody. Well, I'm Scotty J, and you're here with the legend Motor City Madman, Mr. Ted Nugent. And uh, everyone, have a very safe, like Ted just said, a very happy and healthy Merry Christmas season and a happy new year. Ted, thanks again, sir. You're welcome. Here's our soundtrack. Here we go. Rock and roll like you mean it. Take no prisoners. Light that middle finger on fire. <laughs>